In this video, we'll be learning about unobserved heterogeneity with Femex PLS. In the previous videos, we learned how we can perform multigroup analysis and compute measurement invariance. This video is continuation to the multigroup analysis. We need to learn how we can uncover heterogeneity within our data set. But before moving, we need to learn what exactly heterogeneity issue is. This is for reference. This video is based on the research article identifying and treating unobserved heterogeneity with Femex PLS, which is written by uh, the most famous authors of Smart PLS, Joseph here, and uh, Professor Marco Matthews and Professor Ringel. This is part one of uh, two articles in the same topic, which is heterogeneity. And in part one, they have discussed the methods, how we can use this Femex PLS to uncover the heterogeneity within our data. And then we have another article, which is part two, where they discuss uh, a Femex PLS application based on a case study. Now let's try to understand what exactly unobserved heterogeneity is. So we can understand this problem and then we learn how we can solve that problem or identify that problem with Femix PLS. So let's try to understand from the authors what exactly the issue is. So it is when we, we do all these PLS SEM or PLS uh, analysis, the basic assumption is that the data we drawn from a homogeneous population. It means that the population from which we collected the data, this population is homogeneous. So from where we connect, collected the data, our respondent, they belong to a population which is almost similar, homogeneous in terms of characteristics. This assumption might be violated in many cases because this do not reflect the reality because we have differences in terms of the population characteristics. For example, we have different age, different gender, and there are many, many other uh, possibilities of, you know, discrimination or differences between the population. And that is why the homogeneity assumption is seems it, it is unrealistic unrealistic so now we we assume that uh, there are many different aspects or many different possibilities of variation within the characteristics of population and that might be uh, if we assume that the population is homogeneous that gives us misleading conclusions so that's what the authors have already discussed in this article and that might be failure to consider such heterogeneity because we, we we already understand that there are many possibilities of differences between the characteristics of the population. It means that there is a high possibility our population is heterogeneous. In this case, we shall, we shall not, you know, uh, conclude our result based on this data because it, it is, un, uh, you know, it is incorrect uh, conclusion. So, they, they wrote it, the failure to consider such heterogeneity can be a threat to the validity of PLSM results, leading to incorrect conclusion. So it means that we must need to identify the heterogeneity if there is any, and if there is any heterogeneity, we must need to treat that in order to validate or generalize our finding uh, to the larger population. Because without this, the generalization of our research would be incomplete okay or might be false or might be incorrect okay so this is the common understanding let us take an example here if you check i have seen uh, i have taken a few samples based on uh, uh, the population and this samples uh, within population it looks same but when we try to identify them and try to check them independently we saw that these uh, these different types of the samples they might have differences so you can see here if i bring them together they are not similar they are different so there are many differences 
based on many different characteristics. So we mostly assume that these uh, characteristics are sometime we consider them. For example, we, we already consider the, the genders if they are different genders. So we already have that uh, in consideration in our research while we are doing or uh, conducting our surveys or research. So we, we do consider the uh, gender or might be the age groups. But there are many more factors which can create this type of invariation or uh, this type of variation in your data or the, the differences within the characteristics of the data between the participants. For example, they might be looped with different companies. For example, we are collecting data from three com companies. So company one, there might be 10 respondent company two, there are 20 respondent company three, company four. It means that a pool of different companies and the data that might be uh, creating some problems in terms of variation because the characteristics of each company might be different from other companies. So that is another possibility of variation. Other than this, there are many, many, many other possibilities of uh, variation which we could not observe during the data collection. Now we have collected data how to treat this. This is where Femix PLS uh, uh, segmentation processes is uh, applicable. So what we are doing, we are trying to uncover the heterogeneity. So first step is to run PLS uh, Femix process. And once we are done, we try to identify the number of segments and then we treat these segments based on the latent construct structure and then we explain or estimate a segment specific model. So these are four steps. The first step is to run Femix PLS procedure. The second step is to determine the number of segments. Then the third, we need to explain the latent construct structure. And finally, we need to estimate the specific segment my models based on specific segment. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through all these steps because it looks simple, but when we are doing these steps on Smart PLS, it might getting some, you know, um, complexity. So that's why you need to understand these concepts very clearly, how we can uh, work with that. But the basic assumption is that we are trying to identify how many segments are there in our population or in our data that reflects the the differences within the population which is heterogeneity so in through this model or through this method we can uh, uncover the heterogeneity of uh, data so if there is no segment only one segment it means that there is no issue of heterogeneity but in most of the cases we do not find all data based on one segment so there must be a, a number of segments which represent the differences between the population so this is how we work and these are some of these criteria which we are going to use to determine the number of segments and how we treat them. So these uh, segments or these criterions are AIC, AIC3, AIC4, BIC, CAIC and MDL5. So these are very important criteria and we are going to use them uh, to identify the exact number of segments uh, available in our uh, data or present in our data that is creating heterogeneity or or it is a homogeneous population. So if the segment, these criteria, they determine only one segment, it means that there is no issue of uh, heterogeneity in your data. But if uh, these uh, criteria, they show you uh, two, three or four number of segments, it means that your uh, data contains heterogeneity issues and then you need to treat it uh, based on the new segment. So I will explain that how we can treat them based on the segments in the next video.